Scientists have this annoying tendency to take words that everyone else uses normally and then define them very, very precisely. Take, for example, the words plastic and elastic. Most people use these words as though they mean almost the same thing, but to a scientist, they actually mean almost the opposite. What we have here are two hardened steel balls. This is a material that we call elastic, or highly elastic. That means that if, you, if they collide or you bend them, they bounce back to their original shape. On the other hand, by comparison, we have here two lead balls. Lead is a material that is plastic, or another way of saying that is highly inelastic. Plastic materials are materials that when you distort them, they don't bounce back, they just stay bent, and you can see all the little bend marks. When elastic or plastic materials collide, they behave differently. You can see here when, when the two balls collide, they just keep colliding over and over and over again in a very precise way. Whereas, the lead balls, when they make a collision, you see that they don't keep colliding. Very quickly, they stop colliding. An elastic collision means that the kinetic energy, or the energy of motion, is not diminished during a collision. So when we have the highly elastic balls, the motion continues. They don't lose their kinetic energy. Now, I've got a special case here. I have two hardened steel balls, highly elastic collision between them. But in this particular case, they are of identical mass. When these collide, because it's a highly elastic collision, the, there's no, going to be no loss of kinetic energy. So we're going to have conservation of kinetic energy. But not only that, as in all other collisions, if, if there are no external forces, momentum is also conserved. So we have two conditions to be fulfilled, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. Now, because these have identical mass, in order to fulfill that, uh, those two conditions, something special happens. So what I'll do is I'll lift one of these back. One of the balls is, is initially stationary, the other one is moving. Would you like to predict what will happen when I let go of this ball? Just have a think about it. I'll give you a hint. They're both the same mass. There's got to be something symmetric about what happens. All right, had enough of a thought? Try this. You'll notice that in this particular case, the ball that is initially moving becomes stationary, and the ball that was initially stationary moves off. When you have a highly elastic collision between two objects of identical mass, they swap their velocity. So initially that has a velocity of zero, and this has a velocity of, say, v. After the collision, the second ball has a velocity of v, and the first ball has a velocity of zero. Let's revisit the other pair of highly elastic balls. Unlike the two identical balls, these are very different mass. In fact, the ball on the right is almost exactly eight times the mass of the ball on the left. But we know that because these are highly elastic, we're going to get conservation of kinetic energy and conservation of momentum. So we still have to fulfill those two conditions. But something a little bit different from the, uh, well, it's a little bit different from the previous case because the masses are different. So let's see what happens if I lift the little ball and, and send that off. Can you predict what's going to happen? Think about it. Here we go. Now, 
to me it seems that what's happening is every second collision, that big ball becomes stationary. 